I'm fly as a son of a gun, son of a stunner, yeah. Lil Wayne is a part of the Hot Boys, which will be doing his solo album. Yeah. I still smack in your motherfucking face. That's a link to fire spit, man. Weezy is about to blow. Yesterday, the album is in stores. Make sure you go get it. That's my father and man, his baby's brother. I mean, you can't leave family. Right. You can leave and still can't leave family. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up out that water with my Mark Jacob goggles. I've been in the game since I was eight. I've been writing rap since I was about eight. He kidnapped me. Baby and Slim kidnapped me. And I'ma paint the city red with this one. I'ma hit with this one. You rockin' with the boy that took toys way before Christmas. Before there was any Lil Pumps of the world, Lil Zans, Lil Uzis, Lil Yachty's, you get the point. There was a baby goat that was being birthed on September 27th, 1982 in Holly Grove, Louisiana. I'm from New Orleans, Carrollton, Holly Grove, New Orleans, Carrollton, Holly Grove, New Orleans, Carrollton, Holly Grove. How I got started, I started rapping when I was eight years old. Why? I do not know. And I won't lie to you, I don't know why. And then I ran into a baby who is the founder of Cash Money Records. He gave me a business card. I kept calling the number on the business card and I became Lil Wayne. And his name is Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. AKA Lil Wayne, AKA Tunchi, AKA Weezy F baby in the F is for phenomenal. Whose parents divorced when he was two, but his father was still looming around and being abusive towards his mother. He forced me and my mom to live with his mom till I was like five. But he didn't live there. He just would come drop by every other day to beat my mom and then leave and leave, live with his wife. Dwayne and his mom soon moved out on their own, and by the age of around eight, he was already well on his way to becoming a rapper. That was a song called From the 13th to the 17th, off the album True Story, released in 1995 by the rapper BG, who was a member of Birdman's Cash Money Records, where Wayne actually went by the name of Baby D. Birdman quickly became a father figure for Wayne, ever since the summer of 1991. Birdman met Wayne at nine years old in front of a local record store. Wayne rapped a song called Holly Grove and Birdman laughed and said, with some development, he could be something. Wayne would also record freestyles off of Birdman's answering machine. Vintage shit. But at the age of 12, Wayne did something to himself that could have costed him his life, big time. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this story. Here's a 14 year old Wayne talking about it. Didn't you, uh, did you shoot yourself with a gun at one point? I was full of weed, tripping young, playing with it, didn't know that. See, I didn't know that. When you take the clip out the gun, if you cocked it, someone is already in the chamber. I didn't know it had been cocked. Oh, well. So I'm just like playing, like some, you know, I ain't know though, but yeah, that's, that was crazy, yeah. Where'd you, where'd you hit yourself? In the chest, What's right there. Wow. Came out through the back. Man. Cool though, I'm a soldier. It's grave. That's why I know that. So if I survive that, and then I'm surviving everything that's going on around me and that went on around me, I was put here for a reason. So now I'm going to make these platinum plaques and I'm going to teach the game. Wayne was on life support for several days, eventually recovering and would continue seventh grade. His stepfather would then pass away and it led him to drop out of school to pursue this rap career to help out his mom. In 1997, he would officially join Hot Boys, consisting of rappers BG, Juvenile, and Turk. Shit, I got 10 around my neck, 20 on my wrist, million dollar luck. Releasing their debut album that same year, Get It How You Live. And this a little nigga saying something about a little nigga. Look at this little nigga. The block is hot, man. Next week? Next week I'll be 15. The block is hot, man. And guess what? All us from the Anaconda War, nigga, dick big than a motherfucker. We from the fucking, we the only niggas getting a three-legged race by ourselves, man. You know what I'm saying? They call me three-armed juvie. And I ain't talking about up here. I'm talking about down here below the waist. How you loving that one? 
Just two years after that, in 1999, they would release their second studio album, Guerrilla Warfare, which was pretty successful, debuting at number five on the Billboard, selling 142,000 copies in its first week. By the age of 16, that boy Wayne got his high school girlfriend pregnant, and his mom was actually excited, and that surprised Wayne, and the baby just gave him more motivation. By the age of 17, Wayne made his first million dollars, and gave his first big check all to his mama, and she bought a house. Wayne was also featured on Juvenile's smash hit, Back That Ass Up. He then went on to release his first solo single, The Block Is Hot, for his debut album, The Block Is Hot. The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard, selling 229,000 copies first week, and by the next month, it was already certified platinum. I've been lying to what I do, I haven't changed. You gotta understand, I never came out with a Bow Wow Romeo image. And people kind of shaky about that, like he's only 14, talking about this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? Is he gonna make it? Yeah, they went out and bought a million of those records. Yeah, yeah. Uh, little Weezy! Uh, uh. <laughs> Bricks here, man. Bricks uh. right here. Listen, uh. this is where them uh. die fast. Sell bricks and buy bags. Uh. They dodge class to hit the black and go find cash. Uh. You try to pass, take my advice. Drive fast, cause my man ain't no escaping when shots blast. You wonder why the cops keep circling murdering. Uh. I ain't never saw him before. Tonight we twerking him. Cause wearing masses like glasses. Got on tank tops and a pair of Reebok classics. Pants to my knees, cause that make it slouch. I can't talk right now, I got two rocks in my mouth. Oh, yeah, and I can't forget about the little movie they made called Bola Blocking. Where you go? Outside. Bye. Straight? Yeah, straight. Tell your mama though. And that's how I was. I mean, ghetto fabulous. Can't can't explain it no better way. I mean, it's just a nigga doing their thing. Ain't no ain't no super acting in there, cause ain't no nigga super active around here. Niggas just doing their thing. So it's pretty real. Too real. Way too real. In what way? Cause the shit the movie about, that shit that really go down. Every other day in the hood, or everything in the hood. You feel me? Every hood across America, USA, United Streets of America, everywhere. With the soundtrack featuring the whole squad. As well as features such as E-40, Nas, and more. Wheezy at this point was gearing up already for his next studio album, Lights Out, which ended up releasing on December of 2000, debuting at number 2, selling 205,000 copies first week. Every song here was actually produced by that boy Manny Fresh. BT, we about to go inside of the home of Wheezy Baby and my brother Fifi Baby right here. And look, we're going to show you how we living, man. Come on. Right here is the dining room, which we never really dine in. You still see the plastic on the seat. I picked everything if you like. But um, other than that, it's whatever, man. We don't do nothing at this table. It's we from the hood. You never really eat at your dining table. You always eat at the kitchen table. My three-year-old resume. This is my source award. You probably didn't see me receive this because they started fighting, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, 
This is the playroom. This is where we shoot pool, shoot dice, we talk shh. We do everything up in here. We bet, we gamble. So if you think you got some money, you can't come here without dropping 50 and not dollars neither, homie. Right here I got the little jacuzzi set up tub thing, but you know I'm from the hood, man. I do not take baths. I take showers unless a lady friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm living good, dog. I single. Unfortunately, single, but um, other than that, my three-year-old, she's beautiful, she in school, she smart, she good. My mom just had a baby on March 29th, little Samaj Anthony, my first baby brother after 19 years. You know what I'm saying? My mom got a groove back. But um, <laughs> we living good over here, man. It's all gravy. So this was really real. Right here. That was money that I seen was big. The wall symbolized all our hard work. Wayne, the BG, the Turk, the Hot Boys, Juvenile, Me and Fresh. Wayne. And Wayne Did again. we say Wayne? <laughs> Wayne. All right, right now we're going to kick it with one of Cash Money's brightest stars, y'all. With his first album, The Block Is Hot, this young rapper brought the heat. And with his last album, Lights Out, there's no doubt he's continued to shine. That's right now he's preparing to release his third album, 500 Degrees. And what else would you expect from a hot boy? Give it up for Lil Wayne, y'all. What up, what up, 106? Bro, just look at the swag, bro. Look at this. Look at the drip back then, bro. Shit was baggy as hell. That's crazy. I kind of miss these times, not gonna lie. But yeah, at this point, after disputes over money, the Hot Boys broke up. So now he's getting ready to drop his next and third studio album, 500 Degrees, releasing on July 23rd, 2002. Inspired by Juvenile's 1998 album, 400 Degrees. It debuted at number six on Billboard and sold 141,000 copies first week. Wayne decided at the age of 21 that he was gonna rap everything that he had ever written down and he ended up recording a 35 minute non-stop hit song called 10,000 Bars. That was the last time he ever wrote anything down. Listening, I'm official pimping. Be low key dipping, range roll, be twisting. On blaze, I'm OJ Simpson, pretty limping. Big fucking cannon. He said, quote, When I stopped writing, I noticed that everything was real now. I can't speak about nothing but what's real because I can't write anything down. That's right, nigga. What up, world? This is the drought. The car to be out February 2004. Make no mistake, I straight go for cake. I take whole estate, float is eight, man. man. Young with it, but you can call me pimpin'. She pimp you sound me tennis. No silk super out of pimpin'. So I don't want she get money. Come on, squat it. I'm doing a huge for the millennium. A force tools with the goo trying to put her my top. The Drought mixtape series started with the first edition in 2003. In an interview with IGN, Wayne explained that the mixtape is actually the scrapped version of his next album, The Carter, which would release the following year in 2004. Wayne said, What happened was there was a change in the music, and some of the artists that were on the album are no longer a part of us, so we didn't want to put anything out with them on it, because we didn't want any legal problems in the future. So instead of putting it out and rushing things, I was patient enough to say, let's just start all over and I'll wait until a later date. He also released a song Get Something with Manny Fresh in 03, which was probably going to be the lead single for The Carter, but it never ended up making the album, so it's kinda just a Lucy single. Either way, it's a pretty underrated Wheezy track. Damn snakes left me in a desert swell. Don't forget you niggas met me in the desert. I yell, no one can hear me to come get me out the desert. When the nigga got money and he ballin' out, what's that boy worst fear? Fear to drop. 
departing from New Orleans out the first class department. Seat back, screwdriver out the glass, I'm gulping. The Drought 2 released on June 1st, 2004, the same month as The Carter, just a couple weeks before. I'm sure some of these songs could have made the album too. A lot of these shits are underrated. I also gotta mention the mixtape The Prefix that also released this year with some underrated ass gems, bro, like Moment of Clarity, December 4th, Round here and more. Sporadically, same time compatibly. Wayne Carter graduate, bang bang academy. The people asking me, Wayne was crack collecting. I can't kick. I ain't smelling out my ass, mama. I ain't shit. They call me boy, boy, you're brown here. I got the fiends, happy, happy, joy, joy, you're brown here. The album is in stores, make sure you go get it. Now, Wayne, I said I wanted to talk about a song on the album. It's called Man, I Miss My Dogs. Yeah. And a lot of people kind of know what's going on, but don't really know what's going on. So we want to hear from your mouth exactly what's the deal with the whole situation with Juvenile, Turk, BG, Hot Boys Reunion. Is it going to happen? Yes, no. Well, Tell us what's going on. Fortunately, we have Juvenile back with Cash Money Records. Um, As far as BG, he doing his own thing. We don't know what's popping with that. And Turk, you know, he going through some legal problems, but hopefully he get through that. And as far as a reunion, I don't know, but I know the Carter dropped yesterday. All right, the Carter's in store, so make sure you go get that. Little Wayne. How y'all, man? What's the deal? I'm chilling, man. But you got a new album? Yes, sir. June 29th, June The Carter. 29th? Fourth solo album. What's the name of it? The Carter. The Carter? Yeah. All right, then The Carter. Yeah. And you know I got my own label now, Young Money Records. It's the only R&B label. I got my first artist from off there on my album also. His name is Real, R-E-A-L. Real? Yeah. This is the first single off my fourth solo album. This is Bring It Back featuring Manny Fresh. Get addicted. 82, I was born ready. I'm too ready. Y'all Benny crack a ball of black cause I'm too heavy. Yeah, put your hands on your knees and be in your bunk. This is the car of y'all welcome. Hard as Malcolm, dog is the Falcon, Lord help him. And man, I miss the times we would shine. You would keep me on your side. You would teach me how to ride and you would teach me how to pry. I'd like to spend the rest yeah. of my night with you. So how about you? Say go DJ, cause that's my DJ. Say go DJ, cause that's my DJ. The Carter was finally released on June 29, 2004, debuting at number 5, selling 116,000 copies first week. The album got some decent scores, but this was just the beginning, a scratch on the surface. We not even in Wheezy's prime yet, bruh. That to me wouldn't officially begin until the following year. And, of course, to side it off, Louisiana's Little Wayne. Yeah! Easy, baby. Yo, bruh, I'm not even gonna lie, fam. I'm super hyped that I found this clip of this performance because I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know who Wayne was before 2005. I haven't seen this clip in like 15 years, bruh. I'll never forget because this aired on the channel UPN, Channel 9 type shit here in New York, and that was the same channel that SmackDown would be on. Used to watch that shit every week, RP Eddie for real. So I remember watching this award show and being like, yo, who the hell is this? The performance, just something about the fire, the beat, and Wayne just overall captivated me, bro. I was like, yeah, I gotta go on LimeWire ASAP to get this shit right now and make me a blank CD or something. Wayne at this point was just getting started and his buzz was getting hotter and hotter. And this was around the time where he would start calling himself the best rapper alive. At first, it sounded crazy to many people, but looking back at it, yeah, he wasn't lying, bro. I ain't getting no flack from that. I mean, of course, from the haters, but I mean, from the man. 
from Jay. I ain't nobody, you know, he propped me up when he see me. It gave me a lot of confidence to put that song, put a new song out called The Best Rapper like, on my album. And, you know, the motivation was just already there. Yo, listen to this, fam. This man's work ethic is so crazy that he dropped a whole mixtape a week before the Carter 2 titled The Suffix, which was, of course, the sequel to his other mixtape, The Prefix, with a lot of gems on here. Don't sleep. Take a nigga home and show her how to break the key low. Show the bitch how to turn the burden to a beat. Oh, hustle all night, tell my bitch I'm never coming home. Be there in the morning, stop crying, bitch, the sun is on. Bitch, I'm in Franklin. I adore you If it ain't about money Baby, I ignore you And speaking of his album The Carter 2 was released On December 6, 2005 To critical acclaim Debuting at number 2 And sold 240,000 copies First week In fact, last year Rolling Stones placed The Carter 2 On the top 500 albums Of all time list With bangers Such as Money on my mind If we talking about money Man, now we're talking yeah. Carter 2 Yeah, all I have in this world is a pistol and a promise, a fistful of dollars. Hustler music. God damn, mix the hit a nigga in his head with this one. I'ma paint the city red with this one. The mob and more. Cash money, young money, motherfuck the other side. They can fuck with us if they won't. I bring them home aside. Bruh, and just a week after the Carter 2, he kept his foot on the gas. Wayne would drop the beginning of his legendary mixtape series, Dedication. Rest in peace. So now I'm burying the burner in the bomber. I carry the concerns of my mama. A house full of thugs under orders of me. Like, don't leave till you get all of the crazy. Holla at your boy, your species, baby. They label me a problem. And I probably am. So I don't knock them out. Modern day gangster, old school player. A fine display of greatness at its greatness. For a Grammy with Fat Joe. Am I bringing you Hola. Hola. You heard what he said, something. Yeah, featuring Lil Wayne has been nominated for a Grammy Award with Fat Joe for Make It Rain. That's an MTV News exclusive. So, yeah. I make it Wayne on them. But, yeah, though. You know, I'm. Ooh. Right off the back, man, the boy got dollars. So women come frequent, like flight mileage. It ain't no secret. I, I might holler. Bruh, did the nostalgia kick in yet? 2006 Wayne, bro. This is like peak LimeWire era, bro. And like I said, this is just the beginning, bro. And that was just features I showed you there. Wayne was hotter than fish grease at this point, and everything he was featured on was a smash from here on out for years. In February of this year, he would release a mixtape with Birdman called The Carter 2 Part 2, Like Father Like Son, hosted by DJ Khaled, to promote the album they were about to drop later that year. And there's actually some underrated tracks on this shit, for real. This is the Wayne that a lot of people may not know. Skinny fellow with the dreads, high yellow red. That's always my blood, so we forever bleed. Get money, die slow, bang quick. And five oh ain't shit, bitches ain't neither. We grind extra harder, cause the kitchen can't feed us. I could think about tomorrow when his promises, but I'ma just blow my gat on some survival shit. He would also go on to drop his second installment in the Dedication series, Dedication 2. It's actually one of the first mixtapes in hip hop to be both financially successful and critically acclaimed because even though it had illegal usage of unlicensed instrumentals and samples it was still sold through itunes best buy and fye and even hit the billboard charts and peaked at number 69 it's considered by many wayne fans to be one of his best mixtapes Money, 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 get a dollar in a dick. Weezy, baby, that crack 
motherfucker get a fix. Yeah, now what they do, you know, it's Weezy F the fucking boss. Inside the Phantom, bitch so big, I probably get lost. It was just more heat before the next album. And speaking of the album, like Father Like Son would drop on Halloween of 2006, debuting at number three, selling 176,000 copies first week. And I remember this like it was yesterday. My brother had the whole tape on bootleg, bro good times oh yeah and i do want to show you guys one of my favorite underground wayne tracks from this year it's called pump that bass i remember downloading this back then randomly and just loving the shit out of it pump that bass all right let me just show you bro <laughs> I've been saying I was the best when I was 14. Been saying I was the best. I probably wasn't at that time, but I knew, I knew nobody. You gotta, you gotta do how they doing it now. They, they be trying to measure LeBron and Jordan. They be like, Jordan could never be measured as no LeBron. LeBron, LeBron 22. Jordan wasn't doing this. I mean, I'm 24. <laughs> what were you doing at 24? I mean, I'm 12 years in. 24. Be afraid. Be very afraid. What's the next 12 years gonna be like? Who knows? Who said I was gonna say that? I just know what the next 12 minutes about to be like, hopefully. About to roll up one, smoke. Can't tell you about the next 12 years. I'd be a psycho, I wouldn't be rapping. If I could tell you about the next 12 years, Jack. You gotta seize your moment, live for the moment, never for the future, cause it ain't promise. And who the hell like promises anyway? Some live for the bill, some kill for the bill. Yo, peep this video of 50 Cent hating on Wayne heavy this year. And what makes him even, listen, what makes him even legitimate conversation? How many records did his last record sell? Like Not this. Is it interesting? Come on, tell me something interesting. A million? A million records. <sighs> that makes him what? That makes us the same because we both rap. Does anybody who rap, does that put them all on the same level? Are they the same people? As far as he's concerned, he's a hot topic conversation right now because he has a big buzz. I think that's probably why people... What, what, what would <laughs> consist of his buzz? Features, like a few features that he worked on? That's definitely part of it. And, what else? Mixtapes? Mixtapes. He wouldn't even be making a mixtape, because I invented that. <laughs> but there's no significance in that. When he freestyles on a mixtape, it's in song format, because he's following my format. But they asked me about him like we're the same. But do keep in mind though, at this point in time, Wayne was buzzing for sure and his popularity was going crazy from the mixtapes and features. But 50 had just came off the beef he had with Ye, with the whole graduation and Curtis thing. And I Get Money was huge that year. He didn't know that Wayne would go on to sell a million records first week the next year and surpass 50. Neither did 50 even know that this would be his last big year. Crazy to think about it when you look back at it. Yeah, 2007 Wayne was just a different breed. He was really on another level from anyone else at the time. He proved to everyone that he was truly the best in the game with the release of his next mixtape and third installment of the Drought series, receiving an insane amount of critical acclaim, and it's so damn good you could probably consider this shit an album. Rasta them king of the jungle, dreadlocks swing down my back like Rapunzel. I know you see the clock cause getting money is what we own. Rot and drop top in the winter with the heat on. Get your back on my busy young money way. And let's not forget all those classic singles that came out this year, bro. She marks her calendar, reschedule every plan. She knows when I'm coming, she's more than a fan. Sorry for the trouble that I put you in your heart, too. God knows that I do anything for the part two. Oh, yes, I love her like Egyptian. Want a description? Her body's sickening. I can be her prescription. For goodness sake, 
before I sleep I pray to the Lord, my soul to keep I can play basketball with the moon I got the whole world at my feet Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you, when I first heard I feel like dying, that shit scared the shit out of me, bro. I don't know what it was, but it was just those early YouTube days about, like, Illuminati, and they had all those, like, songs that were, like, played backwards, and it was, like, some devil-worshipping shit. I don't know, bro. The beat, everything about it just scared the fuck out of me. The lead to the Carter 3 was <sighs> insane, bro. Like, I, I really miss these times. Just the whole build-up, all the leaks, and just everything, bro. These songs were all gas i just knew lunch <laughs> flow sick so sick need a doc yes a creature monster like the loch ness i gets hotter by the tick for i sizzle to death i just tell the clock give me a sec i'm in the middle of the wall where my enemy yeah i'm running it like eric eric be enemy back <laughs> I hear the track, I'm like an energy pack. The instruments are crying out, where the sympathy at? <laughs> okay, I'm finna be that. Whatever rich look like, well look, I'm finna be that. They say money ain't everything, but I look better with that. It's cash money, young money, have a sweater with that, and just chill and just chill and speaking of leaks wayne would drop his first ever ep titled the leak since people were leaking songs that were meant for the carter 3 so he ended up just releasing them in a project with cd quality eventually this ended up as a bonus disc for the carter 3 stop hating on the nigga that is a weak emotion the lady of a nigga yeah and we smoke that kush I'm so fly, I need my ass kicked. These niggas ballin' by accident. Oh. In recent months, the MCs had a number of high profile run ins with the law, including a January arrest in Arizona on both drug charges and weapons violations. Even more worrisome, though, is Wayne's addiction to syrup, a dangerous cocktail of prescription stretch painkillers, often including codeine and promethazine. Everybody want me to stop and all this and all that, but it ain't that easy, bro. It ain't that easy. It feel like death in your stomach when you stop doing it. You, know, you gotta learn how to stay, you gotta go through detox. And when confronted with the syrup related death of Houston rapper Pimp C, Wayne doesn't flinch. Don't tell me nothing, you know what I mean? Let me be me, let me die, I'ma die, let me live, I'ma live. Anyone who knows about Wayne knows about his drug addictions. That syrup shit is no joke, bro. It's caused him to have multiple seizures and scary moments where he almost died. And this is how Wayne felt about it. If I was to ask you, you know, what's in the cup? Is it really none of my goddamn business? It really is none of your goddamn <laughs> business, but as you can see, I don't even have a cup. Yeah, I kind of put the cup down for a minute, but um, ain't nothing in the cup right now but some wine. I drank Dolce. That's about it. That's the only thing in the cup right now. But honestly, it ain't nobody's business. What's in my cup? What's in your cup? What's in their cup? It's your cup. Drink it. Die. Kill yourself if that's what you want to do. You could be drinking prune juice. Who knows? Who knows? As long as if I say this is, yeah, this is death on ice in my cup. Okay, I could be drinking iced tea. You just got fooled. Who's going to live longer? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth, my brother. I'm going to tell you the truth, man. It's a beautiful thing that you put the cup down, irrespective that it's none of my goddamn business what's in the cup, but it's a beautiful thing, man. But it's not a beautiful thing because nobody knows what's in the cup. That's the whole thing. Unless you come up and drink what's in my cup, then how can you say it's a beautiful thing? Also, when people drink alcohol, they react like they've been drinking alcohol. So whatever the hell was in my cup, the only reaction I did was got more popular, more successful, did a lot more things that I've ever done, picked up a guitar, learned how to play it, learned how to put on the auto-tunes and stretch my voice, and became number one in the country with everything I've ever dropped. I probably should pick that cup back up. <laughs> I'm just trying to make people understand. Yeah, understand. Yeah, I'm just trying to make people understand yeah, that don't yeah. judge me. Yes. Be trying to say, yeah, he should have put the cup down. Why? What did he do wrong? Name it. I mean, damn, that's some deep shit. <laughs> it's kind of sad to say though, but who knows how Weezy's music would have sounded around this time if it wasn't for the lean. 2008 though was truly the start of a new era for Weezy. Being on fire is not even the word, fam. Just look at these features he did this year. Shot it on a thug, it started with a hook. I roll up, this is the hold up. It's your money, man, show the made me smile when ain't a damn thing funny. And I'm a 
running. I'ma keep running, but I'm never running out of money. I'm just wondering why you haven't taken my life. In the late time, from the penthouse suite, shorty like I'm out about the penthouse sheets. Some niggas with guns to your house Only to find out you live in a dollhouse Damn, aka crazy Trapped in a maze Therefore I am amazing I deserve a Grammy, an Oscar, and an Emmy Okay? Hello world And No one on the corner has swagger like I Too cool for school Fly boy high I drop out like I fell from the sky Hold up, let me wipe the cloud out my eye He has class, first in the lunch line My lunch ticket let me eat rappers at lunch time Swagger, shining brighter than sunshine Misfit, ducking the fashion one time No one on the corner has swagger like moi oh. I ain't like it anyway No one on the corner has swagger like moi Church, but I'm too clean for the choir I require what I desire I earn my stripes, I de dies Mommy scream, poppy, no mas Run up in your house, just me, no mas Running this bitch like I got four thighs No one has swagger like these four guys Yeah, give me a talk, couple pimp C Medicine man, bitch, call me MD Yeah, see you in my Wayne is the hottest rapper in the game. Uh, I, I may have resisted it at some point. Wayne is the most talked about, hottest rapper in the game. More action. More excitement. More everything. You gotta feel me. Shout out. Shout out. See, bitch, man. Now I was bouncing through the cloud, she loved the way I did it by. <laughs> the Carter 3 was finally released on June 10th, 2008, to massive praise, debuting at number one selling over a million copies first week. And the following week, it sold another 309,000 copies, bruh. As of 2020, it sold over 6 million. It's safe to say that this album is pretty popular. So popular, in fact, at the Grammys the following year, Wheezy was nominated for eight of them, winning Best Rap Album. But before we get into that, let's appreciate the greatness of this track, bro. Lollipop, lollipop, breasts is just like Dolly Parton. You're now fucking with the best in the world. Yeah, I remember coming home from school, listening to this on my iPod Classic, fiending to get home to play Gaia online. I don't know if y'all remember this shit, but yeah, good times. <laughs> this song was on repeat all 2008, fam. Oh, the Carter 3, yes, Lil Wang.
and thank you. I got this calm on this Bugatti. I'm strong in this Bugatti. Even if the sky is falling down like she supposed to be. I wake a nigga up in his bed when he sleep. Tie the nigga up from his head to his feet. Then I like the nigga up from his head to his feet. You never know. to see her go, but I love to watch her leave. You can hear me now? Oh, there you, go. you fucking with it? That shit's crazy, man. The verses were chipping out on the stream. I couldn't really hear. I heard some crazy lines, though. Some people hang you out to dry like a towel rack. I'm all about I give the rest of the vowels back. I ain't tripping. I got Bobby. I got tricked. Can't name the mixtape Carter Six, cause these fuck ass niggas trying to sue. Get you like some hoes. Big old blood, so I'm going bar to six. On the fucking way. Double on a triple extension on my motherfucking afterlife. Rest in paradise. Oh, Fuck yes, money! Fuck him. A lot of people in the back.